Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Programming and Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is going to be a continuation of our Access SQL, or SQL. More specifically, today we're going to be talking about the more complex operators that we can use in our WHERE clause, such as between, in, and like. So let's go ahead and hop out and go into our database here. And I've got the same select and from statements that we had uh, that we were using before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a WHERE clause of table one employees. And we're going to say employee uh, type underscore ID. Let me just copy this so I don't have to paste type it out again. And we're going to say is greater than or equal to one and is less than or equal to three. Okay, so we're going to get all of the values, all of the employees, uh, where the, the employee type underscore ID is greater than or equal to one and is less than or equal to three. So that should be one, twos, and threes. So when we run this, we're going to get Steve, Jane, and Stan because the employee types are three, two, and one. Okay, but there's a simpler way that we can basically write out this whole equation. Okay, instead of doing this big long and statement where we're, where we're looking at two bits of criteria, we can replace this with the between operator. Okay, and we're going to do between one and three. And when you use the between operator, you're selecting a range of values to look through. And those that range will include the values that you select here. So one and three will also be valid uh, values for the employee type underscore ID. So let's go ahead and see what the results are with that. You'll see that it's exactly the same thing. So we've basically shortened down the query to using this by using this between operator. We've shortened down the query, but it's essentially doing it, it identically the same thing as what we did before uh, when we looked at the two different operators, uh, greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to three. Okay, so that's the between. Let's talk about the in. Now with in, you're going to need to put your values inside of parentheses. And they're going to be comma separated. So let's do one, comma, two, comma, three. Okay, so we're looking in this set of values for any employee type underscore ID that is in one of that matches one of these values okay so when we run this again we're going to get the same results but now what we can do is if i take out the two so that we only have one and three now we're going to only return steve and stan because they are the only ones with an employee type id of three or one all right so that is what you can do with the in. And there's some more complexity to this that we'll get to in just a little bit. But the in operator is very, very handy when you're wanting to specify certain values to check within. OK, so that's the in operator. And what's really neat is you can kind of pair this up with the between. So we're going to do, oops, or is, let's say, between a particular range, between uh, 1 and, oops, actually, let's do between 0 and 1, OK? So we're going to get anybody who is 0, who is between 0 and 1, or is in this value set of 1 and 3. So we should be getting 0, 1s, and 3s. And there you go. So that's how you can specify both a range or specific values to be looking inside of, all within the same WHERE clause. OK, pretty neat, pretty handy. All right, so let's talk now about one of my favorite ones, which is the like statement. Now, like operators only work on text values. So things like first name, last name, username. Okay, these are all text values that come from the table one employees. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do with like. And I've got the Microsoft, um, I don't know exactly what this is. It's the like operator page for the support page for Office. And I know this says Access 2010 and 2007, but it actually is relevant for 2013 as well. And it gives us this nice little table here to try to understand. And I will be posting this link down here, uh, uh, this link up here in the uh, description of this video so you guys can go to it. 
what we can do is inside of this like statement, let me go back here, right after the like operator, we can actually specify in, per, in uh, quotation marks a specific type of uh, text string that we're looking for um, inside of, of one of those fields. So we're looking inside, instead of employee type ID, let's change this up to last name. And the last name is going to be like some sort of uh, text string. So we're going to do, in this particular case, I'm going to do asterisk OP. And I know that's kind of hard to see on my screen. It's a little, I, I can't magnify down on it. But trust me, that is a quotation mark, an asterisk, and OP. I'm going to actually change this to lowercase. And then uh, the end of my quotation marks. And when we run this, we're only going to get my row, okay, the row with, with my information, because under the last name here, the asterisk allows us to basically uh, wildcard and it comes before the OP. So we're basically saying, look inside of the last name column and find anybody who has a, a last name that matches any value before this OP value. So we're looking for anybody with OP to basically end their last name. And the only person in this list that has OP as the last two characters of their last name is me. If I changed it to say N, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's change this to asterisk N. Then we're gonna get ideally Debbie Johnson and Joe Lyon because they're the only two that have N to end their last name. So let's take a look and there we go. Joe Lyon and Debbie Johnson. Okay, so that's how you can do some really neat things. So like if I just wanted to do J asterisk, so we're looking for anybody with the last name that starts with the letter J, there we go. So we have somebody, Debbie Johnson, who ends with the last name of J. Uh, first, I'm sorry, first letter of the last name starts with J. Okay, now if we go back here and we take a look, you can see that this is helping you understand what will return for this particular pattern, so A asterisk A will return even if there is no value between A and A. Okay, so a wildcard means that there may be a value in there, there may not be a value, and it could be any number of values between A and A, just so long as A and then A are in there. And then we have ABA is also going to return true, and ABBBA is going to return true as also, whereas ABC will not return true because uh, C and A do not match. Okay, and then we have asterisk AB. You can see here are the matches for asterisk AB asterisk, and these would not return true because Z is between the A and B, and I guess uh, here we have BAC, B and A are switched around, something along those lines. Now, let's say you were actually looking specifically for any time that the wildcard character actually shows up in the text. Maybe you're actually including the asterisk in the text and you want to find any example where there's an asterisk in there. You can include in these brackets a special character. So this will return true in that case where a asterisk a. Okay, this is going to match this value. Whereas a a a does not return true when you bracket the asterisk because you are specifying I want it to find the asterisk. Okay, so that's kind of how you exempt uh, the asterisk from being a wild card or any special character. Now, as it says here, you can match multiple characters. So AB asterisk means any number of values after the AB. So it can be just one, so ABC. It can be ABC, DEFG, um, or it can just be AB like what we saw up here where we did AA, it could just be AB and there doesn't necessarily have to be any values afterwards. But CAB doesn't work because the C comes before the A and the C would have to be included as part of the asterisk section. Okay, so this AB asterisk does not match the CAB nor does it match AAB. Okay, if you want to get just a single random character, you can use the question mark. And it can be either a numerical value or it can be a letter, just so long as it is a single value. Okay, so if we had, notice over here, we have three Bs between the As. This would return false because we're looking here for just one uh, random character. Now, if you're looking for a single digit 
and it has to be numerical, then you can use the pound sign and it has to be single digit. Okay, so you can do A0A, A1A, A2A, etc. But AAA would not return true. This would return false because it that middle character needs to be a numerical value. But uh, same thing here with A10A. Again, it needs to be a single value when you use the numerical because uh, 10 uh, is two numerical um, digits between the A's. You could do a range of characters, so you can specify, again, in uh, brackets, you can do A through Z. So any letter here basically would return, uh, any alpha, you know, any A through Z characters would return true, whereas the number two or an ampersand sign or underscore or any special character would return false because A through Z is specifying basically all the values A through Z. Now, outside of a range, Okay, so anything that is not A through Z, notice how we have the the uh, the exclamation point precluding the A through Z. That means it's not A through Z. So any value that is not A through Z is going to return true. So 9 is not A through Z. Ampersand is not A through Z. And the percent sign is not A through Z. But B and A, since both of those are letters, they would show up as false because we don't want anything between A and Z. And then, of course, not a digit. So not 0 through 9. So A, A, ampersand, and uh, I forget what this, uh, tilde, I think is what it's called, right? Yeah, tilde. Uh, so those would all return true. But any numerical values then would return false. And you can do a combination of multiple things. So here we're saying it needs to start with A, does not contain any letters B through M, and must have one digit at the end. And lo and behold, so A, N, 9, so N is not between, well, first of all, it starts with A. N is not any value between B and M, because N comes after M. And then we're ending on a letter, or on a number, 9. And that's why we have the pound sign there. Okay, AZ0 is also true. A99 is also true. ABC would not be true because, first of all, B, okay, the B here is a value that is between B and M. And remember, the exclamation point means not. So we want a value that is not B through M. And since B is a value B through M, that not would mean that it is false. And then also we're ending with C, which is not a number, and so that also makes this false. AJ0, so even though we fixed the zero part, and that is in fact a number, since J is a value that is in fact between B and M, this also will, be, will return false, because uh, J is in fact, um, you know, a value, a letter that is between B and M. So there you go. And again, I will post this link. This is very helpful to have this link. Um, I will post this in the description of the video so that you can go back and take a look at it. All right, there's one more scenario that we want to talk about with the in operator, and we'll do that in the next video.